Good morning, Dublin. I'm very happy to be, to be here today. So my name is Marc Albillard, and I'm leading our R&D uh, group at Accenture worldwide, all geographies and all industries. And I'm very pleased to be here with you guys to share exactly what Andra said. I have three topics to cover today. Number one, what is Accenture? What is uh, intelligence artificial for Accenture? I'll go back to that. Number two, I want to give you a really concrete example of things that we're doing in 15 minutes. I can't go through algorithm and go into all the details. Number three, I want to go back to this chest issue, and I'll talk about uh, a point of view that we're going to publish uh, by December. OK? All right. So let's go with number one. OK, first of all, I mean, I just can't understand exactly all the hype about uh, artificial intelligence, to be honest with you. I mean, artificial intelligence has been there for decades and decades. And there's nothing new, I mean, to be honest with you. The algorithms are very similar to what we were using. I remember 30 years ago when I was doing my thesis on the uh, retropropagation of the gradient for neural networks. I mean, today, I mean, it's just, I mean, we're still using the same techniques and everything. I think the big difference is really the fact that what Accenture clothes, uh, calls SMAC, you know, which calls social um, mobility, analytics, and cloud. And if you put all this stuff together, you see that there's more data, structured and unstructured data you're going to be able to use. Okay, and that's going to be good because that's going to feed our machines. Okay, so they're going to be more intelligent. The second thing you need is that once you feed the machine, well, you need to crunch all this data. You need to uh, to make them like more intelligent. And the way you're going to do that is that with more computing power, and that computing power you're going to get it through the cloud, and that's what we really believe. I want to give you two numbers. Number one, the data. By 2020, we should have 40 zettabytes of data, structure and structured data, to be managed. Probably 35 percent of it. 35 percent of it will have a real meaning and we'll be able to reuse. I'll give you a, a second number. Think about it. In 2013 already, there was more than $45 billion that was, that was spent on high-performance computing on the cloud. That means there's a big shift on the cloud for high-performance computing, and that's good for our machines and for robots. OK? So saying this, I put a last sentence uh, on the bottom of this slide. We'll come back to that. I don't know if you remember. Uh, Andrew Clark is the guy, basically the writer, wrote um, Space Odyssey 2001. We'll come back to that because there's a whole trust issue with how computing. Okay, good. Next slide. I want to define what is artificial intelligence for Accenture. It's very important that you understand that artificial intelligence is not just one thing. Data analytics is not only artificial intelligence. There's much more stuff than data analytics in the world, okay? So it's a very multi-discipline type of approach that we consider. For us, an intelligent system is a system that sense, comprehend, and act. And on top of that is learning. Okay? So from there, you understand I mean, all the different disciplines that you, know, you have to cover, from computer vision to audio processing to natural language processing and so forth. What we do with an Accenture okay, and in my labs is we look at all those technologies and we assemble them into kind of capabilities, if you think. And you see, on the middle of the slide, the layer which is related to the capabilities. And those capabilities see that as toolboxes. We're going to use those toolboxes and we assemble them to try to solve big challenge, big uh, problems for our clients. Okay? So some of those capabilities, system organization, ontology learning, all those different things. So all our guys are working on this. And then you see some of the solutions. Now, in terms of solution, I want to talk to you about uh, one solution, uh, two solutions that we've been br uh, bringing to our clients. Very concrete example. Number one is robotic process automation together with virtual agents. Let me explain what it is. This is something which is very important for Accenture, but it's something very important for our clients. If you think about BPO process, okay, everything that we're doing, outsourcing and everything, and the way we're going to be able to automate process, this is very important. Even Gartner is predicting that in a few years, you know, 30% of cost saving can come through the usage of those machines. Okay? So for us, it's very important. So let me build the whole, system, the, the whole slide here. What I want to show you here is that on the, on, the left, uh, on the left side of the slide, I mean, we start with very, I would say, like elementary automations, like macro type of things. And that's what we've been using for many years. Okay? Now, what we can do is that we can use new type of technology, like provided by Blue Prism, for example, to be able to read a complete screen map screen, be able to extract data and do something about it, and launch workflows and everything. It's pretty rud rud rudimentary, but I think that's something very interesting. Now, the second thing that you could do is that you could use technology, basically, to bring all the data in one single screen, data coming from different databases, disparate, and everything. If you combine these two things, 
automation of macros and everything, auto keys, with all the data that you can gather in one single sprint type of things, and you connect that some virtual agent technology, which is basically kind of a, a system that can understand uh, languages, so it has natural language processing, and he has basically a semantic network that is going to be fed by all this data and can reply back and forth to any person, then you come up with something which is very, very cool. You know? we, call, we call that cognitive robotics. And cognitive robotics is something that we believe is going to be very, very um, uh, forward-thinking and very, uh, very important for our clients. I want to give you one example. Okay? So, cognitive robotics. This is Amelia. Amelia is a virtual agent from a company called IPSoft, this company that we're working with. And we work with this company to implement a virtual agent or cognitive robotic systems for our client. And that client is a, a big oil and gas contractor. They do a lot of service and everything with contractors that basically wanted to use this system and to have a better system, just an IVR, you know, interactive voice response system, when they want to ask questions about invoices and everything. We put Amelia there. And so Amelia has been fed with all information coming from the back-end systems using this um, robotic process automation I mentioned. Okay? And really cool about it is that Amelia, she's speaking different languages. She can reply back to you also in different languages. She understands the prosody of your sentence. She understands exactly the level of stress that you have. And based on the level of stress, she's going to be able to reply back in a different way. That's pretty cool. The second thing that she can do, adaptive learning. What she does is that what you ask a question that she doesn't understand, she will end off to be an agent. But backstage, she will listen. And then she will augment our semantic network so that the next time you're going to call her, she will be able to answer. That's called adaptive learning. And it's very successful. And you know this thing where you have the machine that ends up, give away to the agent, and they combine together? We call that workforce reimagine, where man and robot, man and machine will be working together. It's not one replacing the other one. It's not one fighting for the other one. It's the one working with the other one to get better results. Efficiency. Okay? Let me give you another example. Our people are working very deeply in deep learning. Deep learning is the next stage of neural, neural network type of machine learning. It's very interesting. It's, the idea behind it is very simple. It's recursive learning using exactly the, think, the, the thinking that we have when we teach a little kid. You know, when you teach basically image processing, for example, and you want, uh, for example, the system or a kid to recognize, uh, uh, fas do facial recognition, what you do is that you need to learn a little bit threats, you know, threats of the image, like simple things, you know, and can be just the color of things like this. And it could be uh, lines, it could be circles and everything, so you have like the morphology of the face. And then you start learning more and more. You're going to add more details into the face, up to the point that you can recognize the face itself. So it's really recursive learning. And we use neural network, also bad, prog uh, bad propagation of the gradient, to use these kind of things. Okay. Now, the real coolest thing about it is that we have applied exactly this technology for an auto insurance um, claiming company. So what it is right now is that very often, you know, when your car has been wrecked or something like that, I mean, you call an auto insurance, and then they're going to send an expert. And what it's going to do is going to check, particularly the level of damage. And based on that, I mean, the insurance will have to reimburse you or whatever. Well, say, we're going to stop that. Instead of calling the expert, you're going to take a picture with your mobile phone, and you're going to upload this picture directly to the insurance company. And so what we've done is we've trained a neural network to learn about cars that have been wrecked. Okay, it's called judgment-based learning. And so what you do is that we took toys, car toys, and then we wreck it. Okay, so we damage it. L little damage, medium damage, huge damage. And then we make pictures and pictures and pictures. And we give that to the neural network. And you learn and you learn and you learn. And so at the end, basically, what you come up with, you have a fantastic system. And that system, basically, can recognize if the car is half wreck, completely wrecked, completely damaged. So the big advantage is you don't have to send the expert anymore. You just send the picture. The picture is sent to the neural network. The neural network recognizes it. 90% of, of accuracy. The client is so excited about it that they have also a whole business with uh, um, houses, okay? And they do, uh, you know, of course, uh, house insurance. So they want to do the same stuff for houses. So two very concrete examples of here how a system is more or less trusted by the, by, by the user. You have to explain exactly how it works, but 
that's pretty precise, and, and we can do a lot of things with this. Now, I want to go back to the whole discussion that we had previously, and that's all about the trust. Because at the end, when we deploy all the systems, you know, and we've been deploying many of them across many industries and many geography, it's not about the technology already. I think the technology, we can work it out. That's not the hard stuff. The hard stuff is the trust, and the trust of the people to use the machine, and the trust of the people to understand what the machine can bring to them. You know, 30 years ago, I remember during my thesis, I was developing a system for a, for a railway system, and it was a, a very intelligent system that was supposed to provide tickets to the people. They were providing tickets to people. And so, in fact, we faked the people. We just, we just built a fake system. In fact, it was not even a system, it was just a microphone, and you have a distorted system. So when the agent, the human being, was talking through it, it looked like a robot. And she had a script to go through it. And then we tested people. Nine out of 10 people say, great system, I love it, I got my ticket. Could you try again to double check if it's the right ticket? No trust. Number one problem. So we never finally developed the system because it's like, who, I mean, who cares? I mean, we're not going to develop a system that at the end, I mean, it's not going to be trusted. But this is very important. So this, you remember, this is how. You know the computer? I say, sorry, Dave, I can't do that. At the time, the system just doesn't react anymore or doesn't respond to what you want. No trust. Not so good for our system today. I mean, if the system would react like this, OK? So what we're going to do is that we're going to publish a point of view, and we're working on it. Accenture Strategy and the Accenture Institute for High Performance are putting together their strengths, and they're putting together this, uh, this great uh, point of view. And that's a point of view about Accenture Management Survey in 2015. And the whole story is about how managers are trusting intelligent systems. And so we get great news. The great news is that 84% 84, 84 of managers, you can read that, at all levels, they believe that machine will help them to be more efficient. Great, fantastic. See, the problem is, but only 14%, only 40%. Trust the advice of intelligent system. Okay. And the problem is lying in two or three things that we absolutely need to address, and Accenture is really spending a lot of time with clients to address that. Number one, to trust an intelligent system, okay, 61% of the people need a solid understanding of how it works. They need to open the hood, they need to understand, you know. I will believe only if I understand this stuff. Okay, if I understand that, fine. Okay? Then the second one is 57% would choose a system with a proven track record. So someone needs to prove me that this stuff has been working over, over, and over. And the last one is that 51%, they want to explain the whole logic. If the system says, okay, well, that's my answer, could you explain to me why is that your answer? What was the reasoning behind? If you can explain that to me, then I'll understand that. You know, and I want to tell you, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, very, it's very funny because you know that Tesla has upgraded the firmware, okay, last week, 7.0. Are you aware of that? Okay. So all those cars now, they can, be, they can be driven, you know, I mean, it's just like, you don't have to drive the car, really. Okay. I'll tell you this. This is how it works in the Bay. It works in three stages. First stage, the driver got upgraded the, firm, the firmware. They're going to be scared the first time they drove the car because they had to end off basically their end from the steering wheel. I say, ooh, I hope there's no bug into this, and it's going to work. First one, fear. After a few kilometers, the guy says, hey, that stuff works. Curiosity, number two. They go to the blog. They exchange with people. Did you try that? Did you try this is pretty cool stuff. You know, they start exchanging. Now, the problem is, last week, there was a report from the police that people get bored. They don't even think about it anymore. They play iPad while driving their Tesla. Three stages. That's how you bring trust to people. You would just want them to be bored so that human beings and robots work together happily. You know? So with all this, I wanted to thank you very much. Uh, two things before I leave. One is that, as you know, we, Accenture is uh, opening uh, a Dublin Innovation Center. There is going to be a lot of um, topics we're going to cover related to uh, cognitive. And one of my R&D lab will be uh, working on cognitive speci specifically. So, and uh, I mean, a bit of publicity we're recruiting. So, if people want to have a job on cognitive, they can come to our booth. We'll be accepting every application. The second thing is that 
Our CTO, Paul Doherty, uh, will have a talk tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon. Um, I would encourage you to go there. He will talk about also uh, his view about artificial intelligence, what he sees the new era, and what we're going to be able to do. With this, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be with you today.